distinguished colleagues, here, the leader, the governor of Ebony State, the exceptional and extraordinary leader of our great states, our dear father, a great icon that has been able to distinguish himself in a very extraordinary way, is here again today for the last time to perform a constitutional rules that he has the authority of the law, the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to perform at this hallow chamber today, the seventh day of November, 2022. On this note, distinguished colleagues, having joined very conducive environment at this great chamber, under his leadership, having provided us with basic needs, and having helped this great chamber, and having expanded the legislative chamber of Ebony State House of Assembly, and built very befitting chamber of the State Assembly. One of the first projects he started when he came in in 2015. And as today is going to be his last day in this chamber to present this, his own budget as the Chief Executive of Ebony State, I urge distinguished colleagues that we do extraordinary thing by giving him a very round standing ovation First, before asking him to perform any ritual in this chamber, so on this note, I call on Honorable Chinedu Ona to do justice to that my postulation. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues. My name is Chinedu Ona, and I represent the good people of Ohuku South constituency. Mr. Speaker, when you have a good market, you do not need persuasions to sell. And today, the lion of the southeast is in our midst. The executive governor of Ebony State, whom God has used to give us the state of our dream, is in our midst. And I wouldn't want to bore you with a lot of adjectives to describe or qualify his personality because we know him too well. I therefore rise to move a motion that the rule of the house be stepped down for us to stand to honor this man with a clapping ovation. Mr. Speaker, I so move. Any second of the motion? Yes, Kim Konma. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, my rever colleagues. What is worth doing is worth doing well. I rise to adumbrate on the submissions of my good friend, Honorable Ona, that we should step down the rules of the House to do justice to our amiable governor. I so second. Those in support that the rules of this Honorable House be stepped down to do extraordinary thing in this hallowed chamber in honor of our leader the leader of the government of Ebony State and the father of our dear state, the CON, and the, one of the best governor in our great country, Nigeria. Say aye. Aye. Again, say no. The aye have it. So the rule of the house is there by step down. Yes, son of the Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I remain on a boutique duo now of the Hoku South constituency. It is on this note that I wish to request my revered colleagues and our visitors to please rise in honor of the executive governor of Ebony State, that man that has made the not too young to run rule or law to exist, not just in Ebony State, but across the nation. Mr. Speaker, that's where I explain, sir. Any second of the motion? Thank you. Honorable Honorable 
and I represent the good people of Ohazara West. Mr. Speaker, I arrived this morning. The second motion moved by my colleague and friend, Bolana, I so second. Those in support that this honorable house rise to, in honor to give our dear leader, in order to give our dear leader, the governor, the honor by allowing everybody in this chamber, including those at the gallery, to clap in honor of our leader, to shout in honor of our leader, say aye, aye, again say no. The eyes of the house is hereby allowed to rise and honor our leader in a very loud standing ovation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, distinguished colleagues. Distinguished colleagues, I welcome our leaders in this hallowed chamber today. As I am celebrating my last function as regard to the presentation of budgets in this hallowed chamber today, I am very much overwhelmed that this is the eighth budget I've been able to preside in this hallow chamber as the presiding officer of this House of Assembly and the chairman of Ebony State House of Assembly, first of its kind. I am very much happy and I thank God Almighty for giving me that privilege and the grace to perform that duty. So on this note, I welcome our leader, the governor of Ebony State, in this hallow chamber today, your Excellency Engineer Chief David Nwezi Umahe, fellow Nigeria Society of Engineers, fellow Nigeria Association of Technology Engineers, CON of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Governor of Ebony State. I welcome to his brother and friend, His Excellency, his Excellency Barrister Eric Kelechi Igwe, PhD Law. Deputy Governor of Ebony State. I welcome my dear colleague, a senior colleague of mine in this hallowed chamber, Comrade Chinedu Oga, OON. Our dear State Chairman, the Chairman of All Progressive Congress, Ebony State Chapter, Chief Stanley Okoro Emeya. I also welcome our dear Eroda Professor, a former Deputy Governor of our dear states, a Vice Chancellor of Ebony State University, a man with many character and a man that has delivered a very renowned gentleman to the core and a father of our dear states, a great stakeholder, a founding father of Ebony State, Dr. Professor. Chigozie Ogu, and the other dear wife, and also welcome the chairman of the founding father, Ebony State, Chief Francis Oji, the former deputy governor of Old Imo State. I also welcome our dear own, the chairman of the Elders Council of our dear state, Engineer Chief Ben Oka, and our own. Abraham, our own Abraham, very Reverend Dr. Abraham Chukumawale. I also welcome our own brother and friend, the former 
National Vice Chairman of the then People's Democratic Party. I am not sure the party is still in existence. But since I am in a boy, I haven't seen where they are in existence. So that's why I put them. The member of our party today, the All Progressive Congress in Ebony State, Chief Austin Chukuma Omahe. I welcome every stakeholder that, I, that is here, distinguished colleagues. On this note, I therefore welcome everybody and ask you to please forgive me for breaching protocol. But let me, for once of time, rest on the already established one. Your Excellency, our beloved leader and father of Ebony State, Engineer Chief David Nwese Omahe, fellow Nigeria Society of Engineers, fellow Nigeria Association of Technology Engineers, CEO and Governor of Ebony State of Nigeria, on behalf of my dearest colleagues, distinguished members of the sixth Ebony State House of Assembly, it gives me huge pleasure to welcome you, Your Excellency, and your esteemed entourage to this hallowed chamber of Ebony State House of Assembly today. For a purpose which is not only constitutional, but timely ritual in your administration, presentation of 2023 budget estimates to this Chamber of Ebony State House of Assembly today, 7th day of November 2022. It is fitting to extend my thanks to the finance slash budget team of our dear state Ebony, led by the Honorable Commissioner for Finance and Accountant General of Ebony State, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Finance, and other stakeholders in related ministries for always applying themselves to their job to ensure proper, timely, transparent, and sincere processes in the course of preparing the state's budget estimates. These two institutions of government here today, the legislative and the executive, and bear crucial roles in advancing economic growth, promoting good governance, and ensuring political stability in the states. However, the degree to which these goals are achieved largely depend on the sort of synergy that exists between the two arms of government. In Ebony State today, the relationship between us, the legislature and the executive, and of course the judiciary, has been characterized by mutual trust, purposeful synergy, dutiful partnership, clear understanding, and respect for principle of separation of power. This is no minimal measure. I've entrenched a very habitable, a very habitual attitude of excellence in policy formulation, legislation, adjudication, and execution of those policies for optimal service delivery in our dear states. In perfect realization of the principle of checks and balances, as constitutionally provided for, we have, in the spirit of session four, subsection six, and seven, 1991, 100, 101, 126, mainly, and 129 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, continued to encourage a various range of functions to ensure that government policies not only pass speedily but as well as explained in constructive and clear terms to our dear constituents.
We all, we all distinguished members of this Ebony State House of Assembly, and indeed all Ebonians, look forward to this significant day with great expectation. We are assembled to receive the unfolding of the state's physical plan for the year 2023. I have no single doubt that this well-articulated documentation or document is a citizen budget called is a citizen budget because of your constant openness to citizens, but to citizen participation while preparing this all-important financial document. This function being the last of such to be entertained by the Sixth Assembly of Ebony States today, that is happening today, 7th day of November 2022, makes it even more significant in every sense. The legislators are ever ready to pounce on the document, give it a accelerated hearing, and ensure its speedy passage so that Ebonians will have no split in their consistent social economic gains from your good governance for more than seven good years now. It is on record, Your Excellency, and distinguished leaders of RDS that are here, that you have always maintained a proper budget cycle, that, it's, that is reliable and practicable which helped in the execution of the physical policies and programs of our dear states. We consider it applicable and necessary that the circle has remained the same. Running from January to December, the legislatures and the executive will work assiduously to ensure that the fruits of your hard work are realized as always. Let me assure you, Your Excellency, distinguished leaders of our dear states, that the Assembly, after this important occasion, will swing into swift action and begin to work on this budget estimate. This is to show our commitment, willingness, and capacity to accelerate legislative matters that will impact on the lives of our citizens with dispatch, with every sense of duty and love, Your Excellency. In doing this, we will also be guided by the legislative requirements of a thorough scrutiny. It is on this note as well, Your Excellency, that we, the legislators, are ready to receive and welcome the Honorable Commissioners and the other heads of government agencies for the defense of their budgets, budget estimate to ensure timely passage. All MDAs are expected to appear before the committees for the defense of their budget estimates within the next two weeks to be the window for all budget to be defended in this year. Your Excellency, it is very gratifying to know that despite the state's mega resources, you have been able to prudently drive the economy of the Bonny states in the upward trajectory. To the astonishment of all and sundry, your proper resource allocation pool is laudable. You carefully identify areas of weakness, weaknesses in the state's economy and allocate resources in a useful and sustainable manner. Notwithstanding the economic times in the country at the moment, you devise creative ways of generating means to fund mammoth projects like the airports, shopping mall, flyovers, 
various road dualization, badges of empowerment, and very many capital projects to secure the future of our dear state, Ebony. These massive projects are, in truth, visible sign of leader who has an eye for the future well-being of our people. It is therefore our position as lawmakers of our Bonny states that you, Your Excellency, must not relent in this physical state. So the nation and the world await you as we congratulate you on your giant stride. We employ you, we employ you, Your Excellency, to always sustain the appropriate consultation that have long existed between the two arms of government in the states, especially ensuring, as always, the release of funds for capital projects of the internal source of the, the capital project for a Bonny State House of Assembly, and also the projects of the Deputy Speaker's uh, pilots. We humbly solicit the release of funds for those items and for the building of the new House of Assembly Chamber. On our part, as already promised, we are ever ready to get to work and thoroughly examine and scrutinize the appropriation bill to, to ensure that it passes speedily for timely implementation. Therefore, on these notes, I invite you, Your Excellency, our leader, a bridge builder, a father of the fatherless, and Athanatos, the great leader of our dear states, the governor of Ebony State of Nigeria, to deliver your great speech and lay before us the 2023 appropriation bill for the consideration of Ebony State House of Assembly. In accordance with the provision of Section 121, Subsection 3 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as amended. Thank you, and may God bless every one of you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I don't know whether this is working. Is it working? Please. Uh, my team be seated. Mr. Speaker, I think you are the longest serving speaker as I was told in the history of Nigeria. That shows that a good speaker that you are. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Ebony State, the Speaker, the Deputy Speaker of Ebony State House of Assembly, the Leader of the House, floor functionaries, the APC House of Rep Representatives of Iku as our South Federal Constituency, the Honorable House of Assembly members, the clerk, the chairman of our great party, Your Excellency is the former Deputy Governor of Odimo State and Chairman of Founding Fathers, Your Excellency, the former Deputy Governor of Ebony State and the Vice Chancellor of Ebony State University, Your Excellency, the wife of the former Deputy Governor wife of the chief, former chief judge, all the non-serving uh, House of Assembly members and National Assembly members, the ESCO members, the market women, all the NGOs, the, the um, chairman of local governments, 
Chairman of Elders Council, former Chairman, Southeast uh, uh, PDP, my dear brothers and sisters, this is speech by me on the occasion of the presentation of 2023 budget estimates and appropriation bill of a Boeing State Government today the 7th day of November 2022. Mr. Speaker, I consider it a great honor and special privilege from the Almighty God to be here again in this hallowed chamber of the State House of Assembly to commit to the annual constitutional ritual of budget presentation, which is to lay before this honorable house the financial estimates of the revenues and expenditure of the state for 2023. This year's budget presentation is very special as it is the last appropriation bill to be presented by our administration. I will therefore seek your indulgence in the course of this address to highlight some areas we have made progress in the last seven years and a half in some critical areas such as in education, health, agriculture, critical infrastructure, human capital development and good governance, having regard to our five-fold governance, core values and our mission statements, which were ruled out in our blueprint during our first and second inaugurations of 2015 and 2019. Statement of our mission and covenant. Our promise and vision as an administration were vividly captured in our mission statement and five foot covenants as follows. Our mission statement. Our mission is to enhance the welfare of our people and empower all Ebonians to be self-reliant through the compassionate delivery of transparent and God-fearing governance based on integrity and dignity. The five foot covenant with God to serve a born state with the fear of God, to prosper a born state with the word of God, to make a born state the number one economy in the whole country, to passionately help the widows and the oppressed, to build a befitting place of worship like Solomon did, so that any Abonian that is faced with any difficulty anywhere in the world and turns to the direction of the temple and calls upon the name of the Lord, God will answer such prayers. So far, administration has been true to the promises made and the covenants in our social contract with the people of Ebony State who freely elected us. Today, our trajectory as a state is built on the cardinal principles of equity and good conscience, transparency, accountability, and God-fearing governance that is based on integrity and dignity, fair allocation of resources that will stimulate economic development and people-oriented projects that will enhance entrepreneurial development and industrialization. Highlights of our budget from 2015 to 2023. We have in the previous financial years progressively built on the manifestos that brought us on board and we have made strategic budget formulation that helped us to consolidate our budgetary performances right from 2015 when we came on board. We have continued to maintain the best standards in our budgeting process prioritization, both in our capital and recurrent expenditure. We have consistently prioritized, prioritized capital budgets over our recurrent budgets, which evidently triggered a miraculous revolution in core areas of education, health, agriculture, and critical infrastructure. Table 1 below shows our budget for the year 2015 to 2023, including the budget acronyms which reflect our policy directions and my stools. White Table 2 uh, shows progressive rise in budgetary processes from 2015 to 2023. In 2015, you could see a low budget estimate of 75.884 billion and a score budget of reposition. But let me make a remark that from info information available to our administration from this hallowed chamber regarding 2015 budget up to, two up to May 28, 2015. The 2015 budget was presented to the State Assembly, which was not passed as at May 28 of May 2015. The previous administration was said to have 
operated 2014 budget up to May 28, 2015, and that action was in line with the law. So therefore, the budget of 2015, as listed here, is said to be a budget by my administration, effective May 29, 2015, to December 31st, 2015. And so you can see why that budget is that very low. It should be budget for about uh, seven months. And so in 2016, we have a budget of 101 billion, budget of divine actualization. In 2017, we have budget 127, and it's called budget of inclusive growth and poverty reduction in economic resection. In 2018, we have budget 208, and it's called budget of divine manifestation. We have started to manifest at that stage. And in 2019, you have budget of divine fulfillment. And in 2020, you have budget of growth, growth consolidation and transformation. In 2021, they have budget of stabilization and consolidation in a resection, which means we survived two resections. And in 2022, we have budget of latter rail, which must be greater than that of uh, first rail. And here we are, we have budget of 139 billion, which is budget of divine mandate consolidation and continuity, which means we are continuing this government into the next four years from May 29 with divine mandate that brought us in power. If you look at table two, page five, you will be able to see the budget outlays and the percentage of implementation. It's important to know that in 2015, budget implementation was 43, and 2016, it was 47, 2017, 56%, 2018, 43%, 2019, 38%. But come to 2020, when we join the sectors, and for this, we must be uh, thankful to Mr. President, World Bank, the Minister of Finance, that's where uh, we joined SEFTAS, and of course, we've made a lot of grants from SEFTAS and came top in most of the uh, uh, parameters of competition. And uh, in this SEFTAS, you know, the aim is for transparency and to make budget estimates to be almost equal to the expected receipts. And so you can see our budget performance in 2020, you know, about 87.69%. And in 2021, we got 97%, and 2022, we got 87%. And uh, I would ask Mr. Speaker to ensure that in 2023, that we have 99%. Page four, our major achievement from 2015 to 2022. Our major performance or rate of implementation of budget became much better than 2020 when we started to participate in sectors with World Bank and Federal Minister of Finance. In this process, each year's expected financial receipts are made almost equal to budgetary expenditure. We have average budget performance of 90.97 in three years of 2020, 2021, and 2022. That's when we started to participate in sectors. Our major achievements are attestation that we have kept the faith with our promises to the people, in each of the financial years, we have strived to aggressively tackle infrastructure based on the solid history of the past. We have strived to reset the perspective of our contemporaries, reject their educational and human capital status, revamp our health and agricultural sector, and stimulate the private sector-driven economy. The tables below capture our achievements in the key sectors from 2015 to 2022. Some of our NDA's achievements for each financial year. Time will fail me to read our achievement, but I'm going to, you know, make you very happy by reading some of the, you know, what we did. In 2015, under Ministry of Works, you have construction of a Bam around about 23 span, you know, flyover bridge, completed 2015 started 2015 and completed in 2016. Construction of Place School Junction, which is Option Wally, flyover bridge, 23 span, started 2015, completed 2016. Construction of International 
market, that's Margaret Omahe flyover bridge 25 span, started October 2015, completed October 2016. Reconstruction of Abakali Kafipu Road, 14.5 kilometers, Federal Road, uh, started in 2015, completed in 2017. Reconstruction of Amasida Oposibru Road, 23.5 kilometers, you know, started December 2015, completed 2017. Construction of Hilltop Mufi Road, 23 kilometers, started December 2015, completed 2017. Construction of Gulf Wari Express Road, Azaz Road, 7 kilometers, started December 2015, completed June 2017. Construction of Ndiago Layout Road, 6.6 .6 kilometers, started 2015, completed 2017. Rehabilitation of 14 streets within Abakaliki City, 5.7 kilometers, 2015 completed 2017. Construction of Umunze, Akanka Road, you know, uh, Mbam Abo, phases 1 and 2, 6.77 kilometers, 2015 completed 2017. Construction of Piripiri Junction, St. Patrick, started December 2015, cons completed 2017. These are just some of the roads. Time we fell us to name all the roads. We started in 2015. In education, School of Nursing and Midwifery in Ubru started 2015, completed 2015, 2017. The Virology Center was also started in 2015 and completed in 2017. Ministry of Internal Security, purchase of 70 units of Nissan pickup van for police. Ministry of Human Capital, horticulture to six uh, persons selected. The empowerment of uh, our people with one billion, you know, and each receive one million. Ministry of Health, baseline survey of all health facilities in Ebony State, control of epidemic, control of three major diseases, Attraction of partners and donors agencies support with fetal robust immunization, conduct of Banoa, maternal newborn and child health. I'm not going to read all. In agriculture, launching of one man, one hectare program in agriculture, leading to the profiling of 15,000 farmers for assisted fund in rice and cassava functions. Ministry of Power, I'm not going to read it. In page 10, you have Ministry of Local Government, all the projects done by local government are there. In 2016, again, Ministry of Agriculture, you have 23 span flyover of Oshawali. It's difficult to go through all, but um, we go to page 12. The construction is still ongoing, like construction of Uburisu Road, 12.3 kilometers started 2016, completed 2018. Ogwanzerem Okwe Road, started 2016, completed 2018. Umuagara Road, started in Naisa North, 12.2 kilometers, started 2016, completed 2018. Construction of Izeni Iwele de Loha, Ominyi Road, started in 2016, completed 2017. Construction of Onui Boji, Ebe Kwe Road, started 2016, completed 2017. In page 13, you have construction of 231 classroom blocks across the state, reconstruction of a renovation of 17 mission school, construction of 10 numbers bedroom story building for modern schools, installation of solar power in 20 schools. Under human, that's under education, under human capital, you have diaspora empowerment, you know, 520 street hawkers to keep them off the street in Lagos with 250,000 each. You have the state government assisted abonyas in the UN program with 1 million naira each. In Ministry of Health, you have construction and equipping of ultra modern virology center, revitalization of College of Nursing and Midwifery Ubru. Establishment of state primary health care development agency, procurement and installation of incarcerators, conduct of medical outreach, donation of medical equipment. We also attracted 36 number direct drive solar freezers. Under agriculture, we have procurement of combined harvesters. Time will fail me 
in all this. And here you also, in page 15, you have the job of the, this hallow chamber, Conservative Administrative Block of the House of Assembly, which was in 2016. Uh, and uh, this hallow chamber, which is one of the best in the whole country. In page 17, you still go ahead with barrage of projects, which time will not allow me to read all of them. But let me say that in summary, with all this, we have constructed uh, over a thousand kilometers of eight inches concrete road ac across the Boeing State. And uh, we are not saying that this is federal road or state road because every road in Boeing State you know, is for Ebony people. We have constructed a communicable center which was one of the covenants that we made with God and is still one of the best in the country. We've constructed the, uh, uh, what are we call the microcosm, microcosm of the Bible, which is the best you can find anywhere in Africa. We have constructed the David Omai uh, University of Medical uh, of Health Sciences. And I want to thank this uh, uh, honorable house uh, it was this house that named the project after me and the federal government followed suit. And so I'm grateful to this honorable house, you know, for the honor done to me. I tried three times to change it to answer King David and those three times they turned them down. These were the only bills that this house turned down. And so I'm grateful to, to you and that this ed edifice is still one of the best you can find anywhere in Africa and we are very grateful to God for his message upon this. We constructed, you know, industri agric industrial clusters in the three zones. We constructed the Eyeri Bridge. When you put Eyeri Bridge, you put it forward, and then you put forward the, third lamp, uh, uh, the second Niger Bridge, you will not spot the difference. And so we are very grateful to God for, you know, that job that we have done. Uh, the government house, you know, is a place that uh, You'll be very proud to be an Ebonya, and you will see a lot that we have built. We built the best, you know, conference center, which is the ESCO chamber. We built the best government houses you can find anywhere in the country. We've really built. We've really built. Now the airport. Airport is at about 95% in completion. We are waiting for the uh, 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 the assistance, you know, to complete the purchase of our equipment and we hope that if we don't do test run of the airport by December 21st, we will definitely do it by the first week of uh, uh, January 2023. We've constructed a lot of flyovers and people will ask us, uh, somebody has said you are constructing flyover where there is no river. The flyover is not for river, it's bridges that is for river and we've done a lot of bridges. Uh, to follow up with the Ochudo, Ochudo uh, uh, unity bridges of the last administration. And so this flyovers, you know, every life in this state was more than, you know, the, the, the flyover. And so these locations, we've constructed these flyovers, Mr. Speaker, we've lost a lot of lives there. But today the story is different. And so let our critics be very objective and they should not darken council without knowledge. And moreover, we are building for tomorrow. Is it the Margaret Umai flyover that we did to decongest the market people and also remove accidents from them? Is it the King David uh, flyover, you know, that is opposite the university? Is it the famous Buhari Tunnel Bridge that so there is, is business? So you will be able to see that we have um, uh, done quite a lot in terms of uh, projects. Mr. Speaker, in page 64 of this my submission, which is summary of achievement 215 to 2023, 20, uh, you will see that despite the challenges brought about by world economic recession, that sitting at the inception of our administration, the disruption of COVID-19 pandemic and other social disturbances that affected our economy, 
the surge of insecurity and wave of climate change which threatens the stability of the ecosystem, we have remained true to the promise we made during our first and second tenor inaugurations. We have lifted the face of every boy, man and woman through our transformational projects. We have constructed enduring concrete road infrastructure that has connected the various local government areas, linking streets and roads that now make Ebony State a global village. Today, our twin flyovers that connect all the major junctions of the state and road dualization can guarantee profitable investment opportunities and industrialization. The Yere flyover in Eda, which is the toughest and most complex of all the flyover works done by administration. We have enhanced our economic possibilities through construction of critical infrastructure that will create employment, private sector driven businesses, revenue generation, trade and tourism, and made us reliant and self-sufficient, including the construction of David Umar University of Health Sciences, President Buhari International Airport, the state shopping mall now booming businesses, the 80 metric ton pay our fertilizer blending plant, the activated 250 ton per hour aggregated rice milling machines scattered in different clusters in the state, the industrial cluster St. Margaret International Market, the world class ecumenical center, street lights across the state and local government areas, accident and emergency hospital complex, school of nursing and midwifery in Ubru, the numerous primary, secondary and tertiary educational infrastructure, health and agriculture facilities, which our administration established and the other essential facilities such as the President Dwari Light Tunnel, which is the face of the Abonyi State, security of lives and properties of all Abonyans, the new government house, and other social and security intervention, especially human empowerment program, and our various partnership programs with the federal government, social investment and economic intervention program, to mention but a few. Let me mention that our efforts in containing with the menace of flood have yielded a good fruit. Ebony State was to be one of the states to be ravaged by this year's flood. But our efforts through our funding in NUMAP World Bank program in the state, especially within the Abakali capital city, and our environmental protection initiatives have saved us from this historic national flood disaster, ravaging virtually all the states of the Federation. You can see our new map program from Odukwe and Kaliki Hatchery Road, Ebia River, Egugu, Agbaja, Iyoku International Market, Asumonaga River, Awoferekwe, Akufu, Odumowo flood size. That is the first of its kind in Nigeria in terms of effectiveness of the project. The security architecture in Abonyi State is second to known in Southeast. While other states in Southeast observe it at home, order which endanger our economy, Ebony State is safe, peaceful, orderly, and harmonious. We have taken aggressive measures to abate pockets of hostility that exist in communities that have communal disagreements. We commend the security agencies in the state for their cooperation and collaboration, which have stamped out banditry and other violent crimes in the state. The menace of kidnapping and high-profile killings is a thing of the past in Ebony State. We especially thank Ibubago Security Agency for doing fantastically well in providing workable security synergies with conventional security outfits. We have more peace and tranquility with the establishment of the state Ibubago Agency. And I want to ask those who are afraid of Ibubago not to be afraid of Ibubago because even lions, when you go to tourist sites, you see that lions also play with uh, visitors. So do not be afraid. They are harmless, provided your hands are clean. In fact, we have no regret establishing a Bubag security agency, and we rather energize them the more put in strength and remunerations. Welfare program of the state. Our administration has done a lot through the office of the wife of the governor, Excellency, my dear wife, in the areas of welfare of our people through her paid project, family soccer and upliftment, Foundation, as well as the Office of Senior Special Advisor to the Governor on Welfare and Religious Matters, Honorable and Honorable Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Development. I must pause to say here that um, my wife and uh, Father Abraham Wali, they have done extremely very well. Uh, we have set funds that run into millions uh, every month that we use to uh, Father 
while we always go around all the hospitals to release all those that were treated but couldn't go home because of funding and also some stipends that are given to religious leaders to assist them. Their welfare programs have touched the lives of the physically challenged and of course the Commissioner for Women Affairs uh, in this direction because a lot of uh, homeless kids are aggregated and assisted. The less privileged and the vulnerable person, including the widows, the sick and the downtrodden. Not to mention, uh, we won't forget to mention that widows in their countless numbers are given a you know, uh, stipends every month to assist them in line with the covenant we made with God in the exception of our administration. Other welfare programs of our excellence include the first to publicly make declaration against uh, FGM in Nigeria, that is Grand End Declaration jointly by all communities in New Zealand. That's uh, to uh, mutilation of uh, you know, the, 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 orga, the organs of, uh, you know, uh, men and women. Individual community public declaration to end FGM by all communities of Aboy State from 2017 to date. Aboy State mega median end uh, FGM rally in 2016. Continual repair and rehabilitation of student clients from 2016 to date. Continuous capacity building for CSOs, judiciary law enforcement agencies in Aboy State from 2016 to date. Celebration of war days for physical GM from 2016 to date. Mass printing and distribution of a point state VAP law, both main and pictorial copies from 2018 to date. Domestication of a point state FAP law 2018. Dissemination of safety information during COVID-19. Youth boot camp for point youth. The state government is injecting the sum of 40 million monthly through the office, 50 million rather through the Office of the Senior Special Advice to the Governor of Religious and Welfare Matter, which is used to cater for the less privileged, for payment of hospital bills for the sick in the hospital, stipends for various widows and the poorest of the poor persons in religious organization, and stipends for the oppressed, including victims of sex abuse and other social vices, as well as for promotion of school evangelism in public schools. Public testimonies. Your Excellency, my brothers and sisters, we have gratified, we are gratified by the overwhelming testimonies, recognitions and awards that greet our modest achievements. We found a tremendous sense of satisfaction in knowing that our modest achievements are acknowledged by people of all walks of life, including award-giving organizations. They have shown this recognition through the various awards of honor and performance and performance rating which we have continued to enjoy since we came on board. For instance, we have been acknowledged as the most prudent state in the use of public resources in Nigeria, Budget Office 2021. The best, in, the best state in capital budget implementation stroke investment in capital projects, Budget Office 2021. The best state in Nigeria in economic growth, Budget Office 2021. The second best state in 2021 physical performance rating, my good brother, Governor Wike, got the first. I got the second, and I'm happy it's my friend that got it. Budget Office 2021. The least indebted state in the Southeast. I want my detractors to hear this. And the third least indebted state in Nigeria. You know, they thought that I have gotten lose by all these things that got performed. Indeed, we have not. We are just being meticulous and then being prudent. Budget Office 2021. The first best state on control borrowing in Nigeria and the best in Southeast, Budget Office 2021. The fourth best in investment towards self-reliance, road to state viability, above average in maternal mortality ratio 2018 World Bank State of Her States Health Index. One of the, the 10 best states in economic development performance, Philip Performance Index of the year 2020. One of the five best states in Nigeria, 2020 State Physical Sustainability Index, one of the three best, one of the three largest producers of rice in Nigeria in the year 2021, Federal Minister of Trade and Investment, ICPC Award of Transparency Ambassador, the second best state in empowerment and job creation in Southeast, National Bureau of Statistics 2020, one of the top 10 states in YAC performance in Nigeria, YAC Education Index, we've maintained this position from 2015 to date. 
a state with the local government that had the highest number of undergraduate that gained admission in 2027 in medicine. And you see education in this. Let me also say that in education, that the Boy State University has consistently, you know, come top. And if you like, you say they always come first, second, and third, you know, in all the ratings, which means that if they, when they come first, they come second, they come third. That is exceptional performance. And that credit will go to administration in their ratings, you know, in the entire Southeast, and also very high rating in the entire country when the universities are rated. So we must be very proud of that. We have received National Human Rights Award as the best state in education reforms, infrastructural development, and respect for human rights. We have received National Public Service Award as the best state in project innovation by the best strategic media, Office of Secretary of the Government of the Federation, among other awards. We have received several media awards, the best Governor of the Year, uh, Leadership Award, the best Governor of the, the Sun Man of the Year, Sun Award, the Vanguard, time will fail me to mention them. We are moving forward and our target is to be one of the top, top three strongest economies and one of the most transformed states in Nigeria. We have shown that it is possible to achieve. We are encouraged by the impulse we got from the various annual citizen consultation meetings which have shaped our annual budgetary provision to form a dynamic governance intention anchored by the desire of the people and in conformity with the shared vision and values of the founding fathers of the state, which are geared towards moving our state to part of sustainable economic prosperity. In page 71, you see the highlights of 2022 budget. And you will see that we had a total budget of 145.410 billion and that the uh, recurrent expenditure was uh, 55.64 billion, which is 38% of the budget. And the, the capital is 61.73%. And we have tried to, as a state, to maintain 40, 70, 40, 60 budget recurrent to capital. And that is a sign of economic growth. And we cannot deny that we have grown. In page 73, you will see the budget performance of 2022. The budget performance for recurrent expenditure was 69%, and that is projected. And for capital expenditure, 98%. So you have an average performance of 87%. Sometimes when people out of bitterness and anger go to you know, criticize or they don't even understand what is the difference between budget estimate and budget performance. So if you are talking about budget performance, I find out that in most of our budget, education has always come first, you know, and there is no education without critical infrastructure. So infrastructure is everything. Whether you come to health, you come to uh, uh, human capital empowerment, you come to education, you come to agriculture, like we are doing 198 kilometers of uh, you know, ring road, all on eight inches concrete. And that is cutting across eight local government. And that job is about 65% done. And it is going through the hinterlands where agricultural activities are highest in this, you know, state. And so without the roads, it is impossible to bring out this agricultural produce, you know, for the benefit of the farmers. And so this is very important. And so when you look at in page 74, you look at the budget performances, and you see Minister of Internal Security, the duty of every government is to provide for the security and lives of the, the citizen. And you see 75% budget performance. And you see Minister of Works and Transport, you see budget performance of 93%. Somebody says that the only thing I know is how to build roads and this and that, and that is very good. It means that I'm a road builder, I'm an infrastructural professor, and this is very important, at least you can give me that one. The Minister of Infrastructure Development and Construction, because of the airport, their budget has been performed to 140%. Here's the supplementary budget which Honorable House peacefully and graciously passed. And so you see education, and you find out that education had a budget performance of 103%, and they had the highest budget. And so when you budget 
you know, uh, 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 to, you know, education as the highest, and it has a budget performance of 100% plus 3%. And then you can criticize that we are not doing it. Go around all the primary and secondary schools in the state and find out whether you can find the kind of infrastructure we give out, in the, also the textbooks and also the chairs and so on and so forth. But you know the tractors, even when you walk on top of water, they say you are raising dust. Baseless argument. And so you see, Minister of Health, we have 88% performance. And you see, Minister of Finance, you have 148% performance because we inherited some loans which we are paying and this house under the Ministry of Finance, under the Minister of Finance. And you see another performance which is Ministry of Commerce and Industry and they have performed 115%. And you see Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, they perform 154%. You see Ministry Secretary to this government, you see they have performed 160%. Who says we are not doing stomach infrastructure? We do stomach infrastructure and that's why you have this level of performance under the, uh, the, the, the SAG's uh, office. And when you compare in page 75, you compare you know, budget estimates, you know, 2021, 2022, 2023. And you, I will pick out, you know, the three key uh, areas, Ministry of Works, budget estimate 22 billion. You go to infrastructural development, 24 billion. And you go to Ministry of Education, 25 billion. And so it got the highest, uh, you know, uh, budget, in 2022, and we have fully performed to the level of 103 percent, uh, and this is very critical. Mr. Speaker, in page 78 of my address, it is important to note on that supplementary budget that the approved 2022 budget did not necessarily factor in the level of inflection, as the inflection rate was ben benchmarked in our budget at 13 percent, and now we see a spike in the prices of goods and services as a result of the increasing inflection rate, which is currently at over 20.7 percent. According to the federal government focus in this budget presentation, the inflation rate may still rise in the fourth quarter of the year. This has made it imperative to make additional provision for expenditure on some priority projects and programs in the current fiscal year. Let me again appreciate Mr. Speaker and his colleagues for the expeditiously approving the 2022 supplementary budget to accommodate the under budgeted revenue receipts and the revenues we earned in excess of the 2022 budget. Despite the increase in the revenue expectations in this fiscal year, I have made sure that new revenues were attracted and earned for the approved 2022 budget implementation and thus were compared by Section 121 of the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended to present the 2022 supplementary budget which enabled us to account for those receipts and expenditures in 2022 fiscal year. Mr. Speaker, in page 90 of our budget presentation this afternoon, you see the highlights of supplementary budget. A total of 58 billion, 401 million, 295,590 and 30 kobo, were the, uh, the expenditures, you know, of the supplementary budget, which we have presented to you and you graciously approved same. And in that budget, supplementary budget, we had 10.48 billion as recurrent, and uh, we had 47.952 
as capital. And you will see that overall ratings for our budget performance projected for 2022 is 87.17%. Mr. Speaker, Your Excellency, my dear brothers and sisters, we've come to the highlight of today's presentation, which is 2023 budget, budget of divine mandate consolidation and continuity, C to C. What do we intend to achieve in 2023? We intend that all the ongoing projects shall be completed before we anchor administration exactly on the 29th of May 2023. We shall invest most significantly in empowerment of our people and creating opportunity for private sector investment and partnership that will be a catalyst to our initiative aimed at stimulating self-sufficiency, wealth and job creation, food security and industrialization. Majority of our critical infrastructure will be handed over to the private sector to drive. Our existing infrastructure in health, education, power will receive more attention in the area of equipment, renovation and installation of facilities that will improve their productivities. Mr. Speaker, let me digress to worry about some of the funny uh, uh, people that say that they are pretending to campaign for governor. When somebody criticizes our administration for handing over the uh, medical university to federal government, uh, that's the height of ignorance. The federal government is not the one schooling there. The number of jobs created, mostly which are bonyans, are there. The benefits that additional funds that will come from federal government other than state, and so it's height of ignorance. I thank this House for the approval, and I thank you for the support and I thank you for all the enabling laws you made that enabled us to achieve this feat. It's one of the legacies we beat our chest and say, look, we ran a very good race. Highlights of 2023 budget estimates. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria requires that as governor, I cost estimates of the state revenue and spending for the upcoming fiscal year to be presented to the House of Assembly at any time before the start of each fiscal year. Today, I most respectfully present to this Honorable House the 2023 budget estimate tacked the budget of divine mandate consolidation and continuity, C to C. This budget is a transition budget, which means that it will be implemented by this administration and, Mr. Speaker, by you, by God's special grace. The, 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 that we are called the next administration and we are praying and we are working very hard towards that. We are not uh, making noise, but we are working very hard, Mr. Speaker. The current administration will be implementing 41.67%, while you will implement 58.33%. So, Mr. Speaker, I see you have more stake, the House has more stake in this budget, uh, more than my administration. The budget estimates is a total of 139 billion 398,280,640 naira. I take it again, 139 billion, 398 million, 280,640 naira. This consists of recurrent expenditure of 58.36 billion, and when you further break it down, you have personnel. And of course, this budget is 41.87% of the total budget. And when you further break it down, the recurrent broken down into personnel. The personnel is, you know, uh, estimated at 26.89 uh, 26 billion or 19.29% of the budget. Whereas the overhead is estimated at 31.473 billion or 22.58% of the budget, whereas the capital is 58.13%, which is 81.030 billion. The reason for having a, you know, a scale down on the capital budget is because this will be a new administration and a number of things will need to be done. For example, the ESCO members will need vehicles, they will need furniture allowance, the House of Assembly, we need vehicles, they will need furniture allowance, as well and so forth. So it is a new beginning and the government needed to be reset. And that's why you have the 
budget of recurrence slightly more than the previous years at 41.87% of the budget. The 2023 budget proposal is 4.13% less than the 2022 original budget and it is aimed at addressing the challenges observed so far in the implementation of 2022 original budget. You know, kudos to SEFTAS. The policy of 2023 budget. Our mission is to mobilize the human resources in the state to harness all God-given resources to create and use wealth for individual happiness, collective fulfillment, and peaceful cohabitation in an environment of transparent and honest leadership. The state fiscal policy is envisaged to control and enforce compliance with established spending limits to achieve sound budgeting system, which includes aggregate physical discipline, allocative efficiency, and effective spending. The budget is also guided by its trust and the priorities. The fiscal policy trust is predicated on the following educational groups, healthcare development, infrastructural development, housing, and all others, human capital development and job creation, security of lives and property, institutionalization of best practices, consolidation and transition. Major highlights of 2023 physical plan. In the proposed budget, Mr. Speaker, we plan to commence the setting up of the two universities, the ICT University at Oferekbe, the at Oferekbe in Izi local government, and the Aeronautical University as a ZA, you know, location. When fully established, the Aeronautical University will be able to train and uh, certify airport managers, aircraft engineers, pilots, and so on and so forth. While the ICT University will likewise aid a revolution of information technology in the state and the country at large, we expect another Silicon Valley in that of a location. We expect that this institution will train students in computer science, computer engineering, data science, software development, machine learning, among other ICT areas. And let me tell you that Ebony people are very highly gifted in ICT. And so this university is going to further develop us in that uh, gift, God-given gift. We intend to do development of infrastructure at Boeing State University Teaching Hospital. The time has come that we're going to take our, the very beautiful edifice we built in Feta 1 and we're going to add it to the new structure of uh, a Boeing State Teaching Hospital. And that teaching hospital will be started this year. The foundation stay, still will be laid and we start development. Development of other game facilities at the new stadium, implementation of impact program in the state to improve care for children and women against malaria, continued upgrade and equipping of all general hospitals in the state, increase the use of renewable energy supply, install more solar lights, development of new housing units for civil servants, payment of all gratuity pension, loan repayment and payment of contractors' retention fees. Soft loan to small and medium scale farmers under the EP case program. Appointment of over 100,000 to 500,000 Ebonians as liaison officers for community environmental services and security vigilantes. This is very important for administration. Assistant to 140 communities for community development projects. Continuous renovation of our primary, secondary, and tertiary institution equipping them and employment of more teachers and training and retraining of teachers. Strategic partnership with UBEC for infrastructure and equipment to our primary and junior secondary schools. Training of teachers and employment of more teachers, like I said. Development of strategic infrastructure in EPSU and the Co College of Education. Intervention in David Omai Teaching Hospital on equipment, infrastructure, and hiring of specified experts to assist in developing our centers of excellence. Partnership with World Bank on ramp implementation. Completion of the ongoing 198 Brain Road project. Completion and deployment of the airport. Completion of our new stadium. Development of our Bakalik internal rules and 13 local government internal rules. Dualization of major federal and state highways in the state. Aggressive development of agriculture, small businesses and mining. Completion of all ongoing projects. Development of independent power to revolutionize industries in the state. Construction of roads, bridges, and more flyovers. Enhanced welfare packages to our civil and public servants. 
empowerment of over 100,000 Ebonians in the Ministry of Human Capital Development. All those proposals were captured in 2023 budget proposal before this Honorable House for their deliberation and approval. Good to know that the public during citizen presentation and participation had approved all these proposals. Mr. Speaker, the total expected receipts in our 2023 budget stands at 139.398 budget, and this is 4.13% decrease from 2022 budgeted receipt of 145 billion. All the details of our expected revenues are listed here, but in page 100 you will be seeing our, you know, our comparison of 2022 and 2023, like opening balance. We are 7.7377 billion in 2022. In 2023, we expect opening balance to be 5 billion. Government, fact share, government share of fact allocation. In 2022, we have 57 billion. In 2023, we expect 61 billion. Independent revenue. In 2022, we have 23 billion. In 2023, we expect 42 billion. AIDS and grants, we had 26 billion. And in 2023, we expect 9 billion. Capital Development Fund receipt, we have 30 billion, and in 2022, and 20 billion in 2023. Let me emphasize that part of our expected revenue is the completion and the construction of the Mohammed Buhari International Airport. And we expect to gain over 20 billion from that construction. And that would be the minimum. And this is very important. Mr. Speaker, in page 113, clause 50, we have budget proposal, which is a product of citizen consultations and input. We have been keeping with our commitment to international best practices in budgetary processes and in accordance with the fiscal responsibility law of the Boeing State, subject to the 2023 budget proposal to the scrutiny and input of the citizenry. We sought and obtained contribution from different governmental and non-governmental organizations, including civil societies. Meanwhile, the, I was told that civil societies say that uh, I should set aside my executive order. Um, I think they need to understand the executive order. The executive order is simply saying that, uh, because there have been partners in progress, so I want them to be properly guided. What we have said is that if you a political party, including APC, including Mr. Speaker, if you want to use any of the schools, the Commissioner of Education needs to know. We need to know that you will not use the school when the children are in section. That's if there is school, there can be no rally there. You will not use the school if there is it's a boarding school. We've had cases of rape during such rallies. You will not use the school if we don't have the assurance that if you destroy anything there, you will repay it. You will not use the school if you don't have provision to clean up the school when you finish. And so they say they will take me to court. I'm a product of, uh, you know, reformation of our democracy. So if you still want to go to court, I will wait for you with five sons. You know, so we are not afraid. But should I also add that uh, political parties, including Mr. Speaker, must pay for the B border part. That B border part was made, it's a law of the state, and no matter what anybody cries, the law of the state supersedes every emotions and sentiments and will be maintained. And so if you don't pay the B border part, you will not pay your B board, including APC. This is very important. So if you want to go to court, you can add that one and so we strengthen democracy. It is noteworthy to mention that during the citizen impute consultation for 2023 budget dated 31st October, Mr. Speaker, why I talk to you like this as, a, as a, a candidate is that if you don't pass the budget, it's your trouble. So, but while I'm governor, you have to pay for your big board advert. You, if you want to use school or marketplace, you have to write to us. And uh, we will, I have said to uh, the Commissioner of Education and Commissioner and the SSA Market Development, do not unduly withhold 
any uh, um, you know, permission provided uh, all the criteria are met. And we must know that Ebony State is not the first to do that executive order. But since God has been using us to strengthen democracy, we are well prepared to work on that with anybody that will be worthy enough to take us to court. Mr. Speaker, it is worth, not worthy to mention that during the citizen budget for the 2023 budget dated 31st October 2022, stakeholders approved the passage of the estimate contained in the budget and they accordingly you know, directed us to immediately move to um, the House of Assembly for approval. Let me mention some of the highlights of the 2023 budget, Mr. Speaker. If you go to page 101, you will look at the economic sector. Let me tell you, no country, no state will develop if you don't give priority attention to capital projects. It is the capital project that is a catalyst to the welfare of the people. Capital project is catalyst, you know, to social sector. This is very important. And that's why in 2023 budget, we have put our capital project economic sector at 42%. The you can see administrative sector at 13%. And you can see social sector at 41%. So all the time, we make sure that the economic sector and the social sector you know, uh, are almost uh, the same. If you go to page 102, you know, under overhead, you know, expenditure, you see the administrative sector, you know, at 59% and the economic sector at 35.92%. This will take care of, you know, the uh, 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 purchase of, uh, you know, the, 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 the certain uh, payments we make under recurrent expenditure. And this is very important to note. And you go to page 103, you know, under capital, you will see the administrative sector only 11 percent, the economic sector 59, and the social sector 27 percent. The essence of it is that it is the, the, the economic sector that we give back, you know, to the social sector. Mr. Speaker, the highlights and very essential ingredients of 2023 budgets, and that's by isolating the heavy uh, uh, spending MDs. For example, in page 111 of our presentation, you have Minister of Internal Security and Border Peace. You have, you know, the, the budget of 3.25% of the entire budget. And human capital development, you have 2.3% four percent and you come to ministry of works and transport you have 15.56 percent and you come to ministry of education again we have emphasized education which is 15.37 about the same with the ministry of works and transport and you come to ministry of health you have 5.5 percent and you come to ministry of finance you have 19.17%. Of course, uh, for the fact that uh, we have to, you know, appoint a number of Nigerian officers, we have to pay the loans that we inherited. We have to service, you know, our Ring Road project loan also. This is very important. And it's worth to know that this loan was initiated by our predecessors, which is worthy initiation, because that project is one of the best anywhere in the country. An office of the Secretary to Government, you have 8.48%, which is, you know, very important. So, the critical, you know, MDAs account for 87.17% of our budget. You know, so this is very, very important to note. And so, in page 112, you have the, 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 some heavy spending MDAs in 2023 budget. The proposed budget has MDA that will be spending higher than others, and this is so because we have strong determination to actualize the completion of our projects 
increase our strive to improve the educational subsector, the human capital development agenda, and engage our people in food production programs and various other entrepreneurship programs. This has further made us to prioritize the following subsectors like education, works, health, infrastructure, agriculture, human capital development, health, internal security and border peace, finance, commerce, industry, power, housing, judiciary, legislature, secretary, government. You know, Speaker, we had to put legislature here for wisdom. Mr. Speaker, having gone this far, let me, Mr. Speaker, offer deep appreciation you know, to you, a very wise speaker, an erudite speaker, and a speaker that is very transparent, and to this hallowed chamber, the honorable members, the deputy speaker, the leader, floor functionaries, House of Assembly members. Let me emphasize in a way of appreciation that without your selfless sacrifices, we wouldn't have been where we are. But we can beat our chest at this stage to say we came according to God's divine intervention. And we have not disappointed our founding fathers. And I know that there will be beaming and smice, you know, why that they in heaven serving our Lord Jesus Christ. And they will be saying to us, go ahead, you're on track. And this they have been doing. And I believe strongly by the reason of our hearts and our commitment to our people. Mr. Speaker, that we extend such prayers to you. And by God's special grace, you will win the election. Together with your colleagues, you will even surpass our administration because it's a continuous one for in divine mandate we came. So we thank you very much, you know, Mr. Speaker. My thanks also go to the members for the unwavering legislative support we have been enjoying from them in the last seven years plus. The Speaker has continued to demonstrate great capacity and maturity in holding the affairs of the fifth and sister assembly. And this is very important. No wonder he has made a history as the first speaker in the history of Ebony State to be elected two times speaker of the State House of Assembly. Mr. Speaker, congratulations. My administration received tremendous support and assistance from the Mr. President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria right from 2015 when we came on board. And for this, I'm deeply indebted to our dear President, His Excellency President Mohamed Buhari and his dear wife, Her Excellency Aisha Bugari. We are grateful to His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the Chairman of NEC, His Excellency Professor Yemi Osibanjo, the SAN, the President of the Senate, His Excellency Ahmed Ibrahim Lawan, and the Speaker of the Federal House of Republic, Right Honorable Bajabi Amila, let me pronounce it like our uh, presidential candidate at the Etinibu, Bajabi Amila, and all the National Assembly members. We thank the Secretary to Government of the Federation, our dear boss, Mustafa, the Honorable Minister of Finance, being our anchor helper, you know, our dear sister, Zainab Ahmed, our brother, the Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria. The Governor has been a great support to Mr. President, a great support to all the governors and I continue to commend him very highly with all the innovations and for all the great impulse he made to stabilize the economy. We came at a very turbulent time and without this team that I have appreciated working together and going beyond the limits, it would have been very difficult for the states to be stable. My profound appreciation goes to my beloved wife, my own sweetheart, my beautiful wife, Her Excellency Chief Richard Ogumai. I'm sure that my food will be better today. Uh, and my dear children and members of my family, whose support and prayers are most invaluable to our administration. I thank my dear Deputy Governor, His Excellency Barrister Eric Kelechiwe, and his dear wife for being true friends, you know, and family members and helpers. To my school members, both those who are still serving and those who now have other engagements, you are great partners in the achievements of this administration of divine mandates. The judicially ably led by our judge of impeccable character, His Lordship Honorable Justice Evis Engene, Chief Judge of Ebony State, who has proved his methods as a defender of our democracy 
I appreciate all the judges of Ipon State. I appreciate all the magistrates. I appreciate the entire judiciary. I appreciate the Ministry of Justice. My special thanks go to the Christian Association of Nigeria, you know, in Southeast, you know, Chairman, our dear Reverend Father Ibrahim Wadi. I call him all the time the conscience of ESCO, who is the Chairman of Khan in Southeast and also the Chairman of Khan in Ebony State. The Divine Mandate Pastors, every led by the Chaplain of Government House, my own pastor, Pastor Mr. Eunice Oyeyemi, the Founding Fathers, and the Good enough, one of them, the chairman is here, uh, the former deputy governor of Odi State. Our father, we are grateful you are here. Uh, I saw you seated with Professor Boo. The elders council, you know, uh, ably led by Engineer Ben Oka. Engineers are very good at this administration. The traditional rulers council, the council chairman, development center coordinators, the 171 councillors, security agencies, especially our dear. Uh, uh, Commissioner of Police and the SDS. The oppositions were jubilating that they, they have removed my Commissioner of Police. Uh, the Commissioner of Police, yes, uh, I've always said to my very big brother, a good friend, you know, IGP, please don't promote my CP until I finish my administration. And so when the promotion came, I said, CP, uh, IG, please. Hold on, this man has done very well. And we are very, very proud of what he has done together with SDS, the Army, and all the security agencies. You've done very well. The Akubaroa Hayuta Assembly, with our new leadership, the Richard Omahi Women for Akubaroa, the Market Women, they've raised Omahi Support Group led by Chikawangere, Consular Support Group, FON, that's Francis, the incoming Governor Support Group, Women in Politics, Women in Mining, National Council for Women's Society, National Youth Council, and other groups that I can't mention all of them here. Let me thank in a very special my family brothers, General Obi Ebel Omai, retired, His Royal Highness is a last Omai, Barrister Roy Oyu Omai, Chief Austin Omai, Chief Stan Stanley Omai, Derek, you know, Marsha, you know, many of them. Great family with many uh, children. And my dear children, especially Prince Osborne, Prince Engineer Osborne and my very good friends and confidants, my little heaven. You have all done me proud. Finally, let me thank the Most High God for the manifestos of his love and grace in our administration. He has been the reason for the success of our divine mandate administration. We give him all the glory, honor, and adoration. At this juncture, Mr. Speaker, before I come to do the last ritual, let me um, you know, say to Nigerians that as the campaign is heating up, I'm a bit disappointed that we are not campaigning on issues. We are campaigning on his speeches, bitterness of the heart, and they should not be. It is important as a nation that we reflect on the efforts and the strives of our founding fathers, and to also know the degree of benefit we shall have if we keep this country together. There shouldn't be politics of religion. There shouldn't be politics, you know, of hate. There shouldn't be politics of bitterness. And I find it, you know, very laughable when some governors take to televisions and the, you know, pages of newspapers to criticize Mr. President. Let me confess that there is no administration in the history of this country where the president together with the Vice President, CBN Governor, Minister of Finance, have so assisted the governors, like Mr. President Buhari. Without the assistance, do we talk of the Paris Club? Do we talk of the budget support? Do we talk of the bailout fund? Do we talk of the shopping? Many funds that were hidden from the ages past were all unraveled under the integrity and good heart of Mr. President. It is very terrible to be, you know, ungrateful. And when you, as a governor, you are criticizing president, don't forget that the federal government has 52 percent, and we governors, we have 48 percent. We should account to the people what we have done with our own 48 percent. Forget about the federal government. But you become popular when you just take on a president or take on the federal government, knowing that he that, you know, brings, uh, 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 criticizes other people, 
when you condemn people, you bring judgment upon yourself. You should be able to tell your people what you have done with, you know, the money is given to you. And this is very important. We are accountable to the people, not to be criticizing the president or the federal government. The federal government is not a magician. The president is not a magician. They have their flaws. They have their failures, but they also have their successes. We must acknowledge that. And the need for another government is to improve on the, 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 the areas where the present administration has failed. So we can't just consign this administration to the dustbin. And I speak as a Nigerian. If you don't like it, go to Facebook. I'm here in Ebony State. And you can't do me anything because I speak the truth. And so, Mr. Speaker, at this juncture, let me uh, distinguish honorable members. Let me, in my honor as the governor and the chief executive of Ebony State, lay before this honorable house the 2023 appropriation bill of 139 billion. 398 million 280,640 naira. And let me say, Mr. Speaker, it doesn't matter the size of the budget. What matters is the breath of God upon this budget. You are a living witness, my dear brothers and sisters, what God has done in Ebony State with little money. And so we continue to put our trust in Him and we continue to put this budget as the mustard seed. And with our faith in God and our commitment to our people and with good conscience and the fear of God, it's my prayer that the good Lord who started it will continue to do it and we bring a born state as the best economy with good intention in this country. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I seek your permission to lay before you this budget, 2023 budget, tagged divine mandate project of consolidation. And indeed, we have consolidated. And we're going to finally consolidate with the completion of all our projects. And continuity, Mr. Speaker, this continuity is for you and your colleagues and all the good people of Ebony State. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Honorable Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues. My name is uh, Chinwe Lilian Wachuku, representing Ahosa East Constituency. I rise to move a motion that the 2023 budget estimate, read and presented by His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Ebony State, be accepted as a working document. I so move. Yes, Chinwe Thank you, the Right Honourable Speaker. I remain Chinyo Dawo. I represent the good people of Ahukunat. I rise to second the motion that the 2023 budget be accepted as a working document. I so second. Those in support that the budget of 
Divine Minded Consolidation and Continuity 2023 budget presented to this hallowed chamber by our leader, the governor, a motion moved by Honorable Chinwe Wachuku Lilian and seconded by Chinedu Awo Honorable that that budget presented before us be accepted as a working document. Say aye. Aye. Again, say no. There I have it. The budget of um, divine minded and the consolid divine minded consolidation and continuity budget of 2023 presented in this hallowed chamber is hereby accepted as a working document. Having accepted this budget as a working document is hereby passed first reading. Leader of the House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, the most experienced presiding officer of any parliament from Ebony. I'm a dear colleague. My name is Chuku Victor Ozoma. I represent. We are not hearing you. Mr. Speaker said, My name is Chuku Victor Ozoma. I represent Zan Northwest. And I rise to move a motion that the bill for a law to appropriate the sum of one hundred and thirty nine billion three hundred and ninety eight million two hundred and eighty thousand six hundred and fourteen naira be allowed to go into second reading. Mr Speaker the colleagues are so moved. Any second of the motion? Yes, Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Chuku Arinze Lucas. I represent Ishelo South constituency. I rise to second the motion that the 2023 appropriation bill be allowed to go into second reading. I so second. Those in support that um, the, the 2023 appropriation bill Having passed first reading of this at this hallowed chamber today, 7th day of November 2022, we be allowed to go into second reading as contained in the session for order 45 of our house rule. Say aye. 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 Again, say nil. I have it. The leader of the house. Thank you, Speaker, dear colleagues. I haven't gotten the note of the House for the bill to go into second reading. Mr. Speaker, I rise in my honor to also appeal that the bill be allowed to go through second reading and passing on the grounds that the bulk of the work in this particular legislation lies more in the committee work where all items in the bill have been dissolved into their MDAs. For this particular process of the second reading of the bill, it's only imperative to underscore the provisions of the Constitution in this lawmaking process. But I think the job lies more in the committee work where members will be availed with the, the, the items for scrutiny. While well, we'll be talking more, Mr. Speaker, on the budget performances of the previous years, because today, the budget presentation has uh, met me with a lot of, uh, you know, mixed feelings. You know, they feel that this appears to be the end of an era, an era where the presiding officer of the House Assembly is adjourned to be the most transparent presiding officer, 
and the chief executive is also adjoined to be a man with a Midas touch, an era where services to the people is so pronounced, people have seen an unusual commitment to service delivery from those they have elected to man the hems of affairs. I am a bit worried, Mr. Speaker, over this reality that has finally done on us, that there will be a time where this revol revolution will be enjoyed because of the provisions of the law will be ended. But I think I am consoled, Mr. Speaker, with the fact that just like Christ did, at his departure it was difficult for his apostles, but he left them with a consolation that he was going to send them a comforter. So we are sure that at the departure of these Colossus, this man who has revolutionized administration in this state, a comforter in the person of his successor who is also a son, will be given to a people. And that is why this is a budget of a continuation. And so, Mr. Speaker, I am not in my best frame of mind to, you know, adumbrate on this budget. I will be making a lot of mistakes. I have been really, really feeling a bit nervous because finally re re reality has done on us that after today, it will not be the same again. But, like I said, we are consoled that from the very low end, of the great leader God has given us is coming a successor, which is a proof of a greater success. One of the ways to know a successful man is when he is sure of who his successor is. And so, Mr. Speaker, as beautiful as always, the budget has captured our diverse and various needs. Needless to talk about the prudence, the probity, that has characterized the administration of our, of our father and leader. A man I found to be a God sent. He has come at the most difficult time in the history of this nation. Yet, we are here celebrating our best moment. And so, Mr. Speaker, like I said, I'm not really, you know, I beg to submit. Yes, Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and my colleagues. I remain Honorable Kinsley Obunna Igor, member representing Afibo Northwest constituency and the Deputy Leader Eboy State House, Deputy Speaker Eboy State House of Assembly. Mr. Speaker and my colleagues, uh, yes, I'm full of emotions today given the importance of this presentation by our dear Governor. But one thing is very important in life. God gives people, leaders, their need at every particular time. His Excellency has come, he has worked, he has proved himself. A point state will not forget him so easily because he has laid the original foundation of the taking off of a point state. I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, if when uh, the presentation was being made by His Excellency the Governor, I don't know if we paid some particular attention to some international accolades and national accolades the Governor has brought on a boy state through budget implementation. He mentioned when we were the first in capital expenditure and investment infrastructure among the 36 states. We were the first in the Southeast in budget implementation and second in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We were fourth in CEFTAS, which is a World Bank analysis. Now, the most important of them all is that Ebony is the third least 
indebted state in the country with all this infrastructural development. Your Excellency, well, thank you. That is a man with a Maida's torch. Mr. Speaker, as you can see the name of this budget, Divine Mandate, Consolidation and Continuity, I can tell you one thing. For any meaningful development to take place in any country, nation, or state, the infrastructure must be in place. It is the first and foremost thing to do. When His Excellency was talking, he mentioned about the, the ring road that is connecting about eight local governments. You can know that in all those our eight local governments, all the farm produce can easily get into the town which means there will be mobility of agricultural produce and mobility of labor. And again, like the, when the leader was saying, when, when he was talking about Christ, about leaving and leaving somebody with them, he is also leaving one of our own who has passed through the ranks, who knows what it is, who was part and parcel of the outgoing administration to come into the next administration. Most times, people like, us who, people like us who visit Lagos often, you go about and discuss, Lagos is growing, Lagos is growing. How did Lagos grow? Lagos grew because there was a master plan. When the person who initiated the master plan left, there was a successor. And the successor did not go to start his own projects. He continued with the master plan. He left another successor took over. I wish that would be the case of a book. We should open our eyes. The governor has brought a point to the nation and the world in general. Before we were not looked at the way we are being looked at. Most times I laugh when, the, when His Excellency complains about enemies and people who talk about him. Your Excellency, they talk about you because you are bearing good fruit. If you were not bearing any good fruit, nobody will talk about you. So most times you need enemies to excel. You know, so my colleagues, if you go through the budget as read and go through it, you will still see that prudent manager of scarce resources. The governor has exhibited over the years that he's a prudent manager of resources. So I do not think we will have to delay so much on this budget, given his antecedents and given what we have. You can see the universities that are going to be built, the one in Oferekwe, which is in his words, going to create a Silicon Valley. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker and my colleagues, I join all of us to act and work for the speed, speedy you. approval of this budget. Thank you and God bless us all. Thank you very much. Chair Mike. Thank you, the Right Honorable Speaker and our incoming governor. Distinguished colleagues, my yeah, name is Honorable Barrister Muho Linus Friday. I represent the very good people of Aza Northeast constituency in this assembly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to appreciate the leader of our state, the great lion of the East, the man that has made us proud. Mr. Speaker, our leader, the governor, has distinguished himself in so many areas. One, for the respect of the rules of law. A close look to the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended out of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The fundamental functions of government is provisions of security and welfare to the people. On the area of security, a point state is rated very high today in the country because of the low crime rate that we experience in the state. Courtesy of His Excellencies security policies and programs. Mr. Speaker, on the area of welfare, res ipsa loquitur, the fact is speaking for itself. 
we can see the presence of the governor scattered all over the whole state in triangular equilibrium, reflecting all the major three zones in the state equally. Most importantly, Mr. Speaker, I've watched over the years since, 19, since 2019 when we joined this assembly. We have observed his religious implementations of budgetary provisions, his prudent management of resources, his high level of prudence in management of resources. As a result, Mr. Speaker, I therefore join my colleagues. I therefore, Mr. Speaker, support my colleagues that this bill be moved to next level and urge my colleagues equally to support them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, distinguished colleagues, those believe that um, the submission of the leader have been able to convince you, and we agree with the submission of the leader that this bill presented to us, having passed first reading and already agreed to be in second reading, that this bill be allowed to pass second reading. Say aye. Aye. Against a nail. I have so the a bill for a law to appropriate the sum of one hundred and thirty nine billion three hundred and ninety eight million two hundred and eighty thousand six hundred and fourteen naira no kobo. Is a bypass the second reading at this hallow chamber today, the seventh day of November 2022. And this bill is hereby committed to all the committees. So all the committees, the heads of agencies and head of all the MDAs will visit the committee as regard to their own ministries and agencies as from Tuesday tomorrow by 10 a.m. in the committee's room, committee rooms we have about five committee rooms in this hallow chamber. Thank you. Yes, Honorable Chinwe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues. Having successfully presented the budget, I rise to move a motion that the His Excellency, the Governor, be ushered out of the hallow chamber. Thank you. I so move. Any second of the motion? Yes, Kim Konuma. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, my revered colleagues. My name is Kemka Okoro Onuma. I represent Africa Southwest constituency. Whereas this section is over, whereas my honorable colleague Chingwe Wachuku has moved a motion to have the, our governor escorted out. I rise with all dignity and privilege, Mr. Speaker, to second the motion I so second. Those in support that uh, His Excellency, the Chief Executive, having performed his constitutional rights by presenting a budget prepared by himself according to Section 121, Subsection 1 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, be ushered out at this hallow, ushered out of this hallow chamber.